highest volume of rainfall recorded in decades, government to invest more in city drainage. East Bank Corridor has undergone great transformation, President as he visits several projects. Stakeholders input important to gain achieving developed country status, President and GLDA distributes first specially bred pigs. Recipients urge to use stock for breeding. With this genuine news capsule, I'm General Carter. Good evening. Government has committed to investing more resources in drainage infrastructure in the city and along the coast as an assessment done by engineers following the heavy rainfall showed the highest recorded in Georgetown was 186 milliliters over 24 hours period. Teams of engineers and ministers on Thursday morning visited several sluices around Georgetown, including Sussex and Princess Streets, Rhinevelt, Riverview, J.P. Santos, and Kingston, among others. We will look where we can, along with agriculture, DNI, to see where we can put in pumps, to see where we should put in um, enhanced drainage that is making some embankment cuts. We've made a cut this morning, I think, along the railway embankment between Lamaha and the Cummings Canal. The heavy rainfall had resulted in extensive flooding in Georgetown, the lower East Bank Demerara and West Demerara and Essequibo Coast. The Guyana Bank for Trade and Industry commissioned its 12th branch that will seek to offer quality service to Guyanese citizens. On Wednesday evening, President Donald Ramatar joined the bank's Chief Executive Officer John Tracy, Chairman of the Board of Directors Robin Stoby, and other officials for the symbolic ribbon cutting ceremony for the $60 million structure. The head of state noted that yet again, this investment demonstrates the confidence that the business sector has in the economy. Over the years, the East Bank Corridor has undergone tremendous transformation as the government has invested heavily in changing the geographical space that was once a farming area into one where modern amenities are now taking over. This transformation has seen much support from the private and public sectors and which has realized such features as a number of modern housing area, a system of interlocking roads, several commercial banks, businesses, and branches of city businesses. It's a massive transformation because I was here uh, when this, this 1,000 homes was, was going to be launched and I'm now very, very presently surprised in just less than a year that, um, that this place has already been transformed. So I got to congratulate the Minister of Housing and, and his staff uh, for the job that they're doing here and, they, um, and I'm very happy to see a lot of um, working people will have the possibility of having their own homes and not, not having to pay a rent um, any longer, but they own their own homes. And that, is, that will give them an enormous amount of personal security that I'm sure will help them to be much more comfortable and they will be able to make a, a, a much bigger contribution to work and generally within the society. Whilst on a visit to the area, President Donald Ramatar visited a number of ongoing government projects, which all have the aim of continuing the transformation of the East Bank into a thriving residential business and educational hub. The Guyana Lands and Survey Commission has added eight new land surveyors to its complement to boost the capacity of the Commission and other government agencies that requires their specialized skills. Minister of Natural Resources and the Environment Robert Bassad congratulated the successful surveyors and highlighted that nearly every aspect of national development, both from the public sector and the private sector requires some level of surveying. He told the surveyors they have been given essential skills and tools for national building, but also for the prosperity and progress of this nation, and that must not be ignored or taken lightly. As part of the government's drive to enhance local breeds of livestock, the Guyana Livestock and Development Authority handed over 12 specially bred pigs to livestock farmers on November 20th. The pigs are meant to boost the capacity of the local pork producers and improve their current stock. The breed consists of the Yorkshire, the Danish Landrace, and the Duroc, all of which can reach 700 pounds and are intended for breeding. Thank you for watching this Uni News capsule. Do join us again. I'm Janelle Carter. Good night.